Hello friend, welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today, I'm going to be showing you how to make a lovely vintage carriage cover. Now you can adapt this stitch pattern to be bigger and make a vintage blanket. It's really entirely up to you. This pattern was originally published in 1963 and it is a beautiful textured knit blanket and it uses bulky wool so you're going to need about 22 ounces and I think I have seven of these beautiful red maroonish colors here that I'm going to use. The finish size is going to be 28 by 32 inches roughly. It's a carriage cover so I'm not going to hold myself to it if it's a little bit bigger or a little bit smaller. Obviously, if you're making this a little bit bigger, then, you know, it'll be whatever size you make it. <laughs> okay, then I have here uh, some US 9 knitting needles, which I believe is going to be a 6 millimeter, if I'm not mistaken. All right, let's jump right in. So I'm gonna pull a little bit of a tail out here. And with any blanket that I cast on, I have found out that I like using the backwards loop cast on because it maintains a little bit of integrity at the edge. So instead of being super stretchy, it's going to give us a little firm stretch. And that's really what I like in my blankets. I like them to hold shape. So what I'm going to do is pull out a length long enough here that'll allow me to weave in my ends later. And I have some pretty long needles, long straight needles. If you don't like um, working with long straight needles, then you can certainly use circular needles. Uh, they're a little bit easier to manage and I might get frustrated with this um, hitting the desk or whatever <laughs> and go ahead and change those later. But for now, I'm starting out with the recommended 14 inch long number um, number nines. Okay, so go ahead and grab you a nice warm little beverage. I have my peppermint mocha coffee here and mm, love cozy, cozy mornings where I can sit and knit and just quietly sip my coffee. Here we go. So we're going to start with a slip knot. Boop. Now we've started. For the backwards loop cast on, I'm going to hold the yarn in my hand here like so, and I'm going to put it under my thumb, just like this. And then I'm going to go in through here and then drop it. Get set back up, go in through here and drop it off like that. And it's as simple as that. So I've got four stitches, I need 75. So go ahead and cast on 75 stitches using the backward loops cast on. Now be mindful not to pull too tight. Don't tug here. You just wanna pull tight enough to make sure that you're having consistent stitches on here. Don't pull it too tight because we have to work these and we don't wanna be struggling with it. All right, so I've got 20 stitches so far. I'm gonna go ahead and finish the rest off camera and I'll meet you back here when I'm done. All right, 75 stitches has been cast on. So I'm ready to move forward. So the first step of the pattern states that we need to work in seed stitch for two inches. It doesn't give us any definition as to what seed stitch is, so I've done a little research and although I should know this by now after knitting for knit 10 plus years, 
I am now educated on the fact that seed stitch is just alternating um, knit and purl stitches. So we're going to knit one, purl one all the way down. And then when we get to the end, we should land on a knit one because we have an uneven number of stitches or an odd number of stitches. When we turn, we're going to, um, I believe it's knit one, purl one. So it's alternating. We'll see what happens. So let's start with our first row. And we're going to knit one, purl one all the way down. Ooh, yeah, this is going to be tricky with these long needles. <laughs> Definitely going to have to change to a circular if I'm going to work. Although it is very close to the camera. You guys might like that. So we're going to knit one, purl one all the way down. Now often you'll see me when I'm doing knit one, purl one, I'll knit through the back loop, but if I'm working flat, I don't do that. There's really no point in it. Not for me anyway. Yeah, these needles aren't going to work. Let me go switch to a smaller, the circulars. These would work if I wasn't doing a tutorial and if I was just sitting and knitting casually, but I'm going to go get the smaller needles. All right, let's continue on. So you have our knit one, purl one, knit one, purl one. So now I'm going to continue doing knit and purl all the way down the row. It could be a little tricky sometimes to get under these backward loops cast on, but just dig in there and you'll get it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to finish the rest of these knit one purl ones off camera and then when I get to the end of the row I'll meet you back here. All right so this is what I have here so far. This is much more comfortable working on than the straight needles. So I've got my 75 stitches here and beautiful. All right so now we're going to turn our work and we've done knit one purl one all on the front side so when we turn our work we're going to be faced here with the beginning as a purl one because we ended it on knit one. And when you turn the work over, it's going to be a purl. So what I'm going to do is do knit, purl, knit, purl all the way down. So we're going to knit one, purl one again on the second row. Start with a knit. It should be much, much easier this time because we're not working on the cast one. Typically, I tend to work with fingering weight yarns and DK weight yarns, but this season I've really been enjoying working with worsted and bulky um, weight yarns because they work up so quickly. I'm 
pretty used to sweaters and, you know, things I work on with fingering weight taking months to complete. But I'm working on a cardigan now in worsted weight. And it's just so satisfying how quickly it's flying off the needles. So anticipate a lot more worsted and bulky weight projects coming from me in the future. Plus, they're just so warm and cozy. Don't get me wrong, I love how soft and light my fingering weight sweaters are, but nothing beats a really chunky worsted or bulky weight sweater when it's really early in the morning and the air outside is really crisp and cold. So I'm really looking forward to finishing more projects. All right, we're coming up to the end here. <clears throat> All right, let's see what we have so far. Let's turn our work and spread our needle or spread our stitches out on the needle. Oof, so this is going to be pretty long. Now, I don't know exactly how many stitches you'll need to cast on if you want to make this bigger, but as I work through the pattern, I'll figure it out. So look in the description below to see um, what I came up with. Okay, so this is what we have so far. And this is a seed stitch, so it's going to be alternating knits and purls, and we're going to keep doing this for two inches. So let me see, where is my measuring tape? Excuse me, sir. Okay, there you are. Oh, I've got it backwards. Anyways, okay, so we've got quite a ways to go. So we're about at a half, three quarters of an inch, half an inch right now. So I want to get to here with that. So let's go ahead and finish that up. And I'm going to do that off camera. And when I finish, I'll meet you back here. All right, so now I have two inches of this beautiful seed stitch pattern. And isn't that just lovely? I don't often work this stitch pattern, but when I do, I just appreciate it so much. And it's pretty common on vintage patterns. So I'm excited that I get to work it on this one. Okay. What did I do with my stitch markers? That's a good question, isn't it? I had them, but now I do not. All right, hold on. Let me try to find those real quick and I'll be right back. All right, I have found the runaway stitch markers. They were actually just off camera right here, <laughs> but I couldn't see them on the background. Oh my goodness. Okay, so for this next section, we're gonna be, we're gonna start working the pattern. So it will be very helpful if you get two stitch markers so we can block off our seed stitch border because we're going to do one, two, three, four, five stitches of seed stitch at the very beginning. So having those markers there are going to help you remember where to start and stop the seed stitch. So let's go ahead and get started. So I'm going to do knit one, knit two, three, four, and five. So now I'm going to place my stitch marker to denote the end of the border. All right, so now we're gonna get into the repeat of the pattern. So we're gonna knit five. One, two, three, four, five. And now we're going to slip five with yarn in front of the work. So what that's going to look like is we're gonna move our yarn in front and I'm going to slip as if to purl because it doesn't denote otherwise. One, two, three, four, and five. So now I've slipped five with the yarn in front 
and that's going to be our repeat. So we're going to knit five. One, two, three, four, five. And then we're going to move our yarn in front and slip five. One, two, three, four, and five. And then we're going to move our yarn to the back again and start all over again. Knit five, two, three, four, five. Move yarn to the front and slip five. Two, three, four, and five. And we're just going to repeat that all the way to the end. Now you want to make sure that you're not cramming your stitches up and pulling this way too tight. So go ahead and spread your stitches out and then you've got your yarn in front there. So I'm going to continue working that all the way to the last five stitches. And you know what? I'm just going to stay here with you guys because it might get a little confusing. So let's go ahead and knock this out. One, two, three, four, five. Slip five with yarn in front. Bring it to the back, spread those stitches out. One, two, three, four, five. Yarn to the front, slip five. And then we're going to spread those stitches out. And then continue one, one, Yarn to the front. Spread the stitches out. All right, so you should end on a knit five. So your last stitches should be knit five. Now we've come to the seed stitch border. So I'm gonna go ahead and take my marker, <coughs> place it, and then I'm gonna look here and see, I, all right, I have a purl stitch next, so I need to knit one and then do my seed stitch border. So knit, purl, knit, purl, and then knit. All right, let's take a look at what we've got so far. All right, so we have, it looks a little messy, right? Doesn't look very pretty right yet, but we've got a row here with some loose thread or use loose yarn. So that is what we want. We want those little yarn overs in front. So now we're going to turn our work and for row two we're going to knit our seed stitch border. So we're going to knit, purl, and this is where those markers come in real handy because once we get to that marker, we know we're at the end of our seed stitch border. Go ahead and pop that marker over, and then we're gonna just purl all the way to the beginning. Well, to the next marker, don't purl all the way to the beginning. You gotta do your seed stitch border. <laughs> all right, here we come the end where we're getting to the marker. All right, so we've gotten to the marker here. Let's pop that over. And then we have a purl stitch here, so we're gonna knit one, purl, knit, purl, and knit. Let's turn our work. All right, so this is what we have. That was just a simple purl row, so now we're going to go on to row three. Not much to see yet. So let's head on to row three. So a third row, we're going to do just like we did the first row. So we're going to do our seed stitch. Oh, look at me almost messing up. All right, we got our seed stitch. 
Now we're going to knit five. And then we're going to slip five again with the yarn in front. I didn't stretch after that last one. I think I'll be okay though. Okay. Let's keep going. All right, so we're just working along, knit five, slip five with yarn in front. I really like working with really sharp needle tips, but once you start getting up into like the worsted weights and the bulky weights, it starts getting a little tricky because it starts splitting the yarn. All right, <clears throat> at the end here, doing my seed stitch border. All right, that's row three. Okay, so now we've got two little lines here. That's gonna be interesting. So let's turn our work. We're gonna do the same thing as we did for row two. So every even row is going to be our seed stitch border, and then we're gonna purl all the way across. Let's go ahead and do that. All right, so that's row four completed. So row five is gonna be another repeat of the knit five, slip five. So let's go ahead and get that knocked out.
I'm struggling <laughs> trying to get that on there. Okay. One, two, three, <clears throat> four, and five. So this looks like a five stitch repeat. So if you're trying to make this larger, um, no, it might be a 10. Oh my goodness, what am I doing? I'm thinking about different things and I'm messing up my seed stitch border. <laughs> okay. There we go. See, it looks like it's a 10 stitch repeat. I would, I would wager that to say it's a 10 stitch repeat. <clears throat> I'm not good at, at calculating that stuff though just yet. I'm sure I'll think about it more and have it figured out by the end of this video. All right, row six is going to be another purl row. So all of our even rows are purl rows. needles way too long up here. There we go. That stitch is pushed too far back. All right, here's our border. row seven. So this is where we're going to do something different. Thank goodness, right? So we're going to do our seed stitch border. Now I've never done this before, so if I struggle for a second, give me a second to figure it out. So we're going to knit seven. One, two, three, Four, five, six, and seven. So we've knit seven. Now we're going to insert our needle, our right hand needle here, under the three loops of the slip stitch rows. So let's grab these three. One, oh, that's tricky. So there's one, there's two, and there's three. So we've got these three on our hook. And then we're going to go into the next stitch and we're going to knit those all together like so. And then we're just going to drop that off. And then we're going to knit nine. One, two, three, four, five, 
six, seven, eight, and nine. Now we're gonna do it again. We're gonna insert our needle, our right hand needle, under those three loops. So we're gonna pick them up, one, two, and three. Insert our needle into the next stitch, and then we're gonna pull that all through those and then drop that stitch off the hook, or off the needle. Knit nine. And do it again. This is actually really fun. Oh goodness. I say that and then now I'm struggling. Okay, all right, it's easier to go towards the middle here, or towards the left-hand side, if you find yourself struggling. Uh-oh, I gotta get all through here. All right, there we go. <laughs> all right, under all three, one, two, three, make sure not to grab any other stitches. So see how I have just those three? It's easy to grab thread from the yarn back here, so be careful not to do that. All right, pull that through. Let's keep on trucking. I can see how if you had these yarn overs or the yarn in fronts too tight, it will pinch the work closed. All right, so after we do our last, um, grabbing those three here, what we're gonna do is knit seven, I believe. So I've got two, So now we've ended with a knit seven. Now we're gonna do our seed stitch. All right, let's look and see what we have so far. <laughs> That's an interesting little stitch, isn't it? Look at that. Curious to see how it develops out. That looks really pretty. So now we're on a uh, purl row. So let's go ahead and knock our pearls out here. So I've got my border done. Let's get our pearls out the way.
This blanket is going to work up so quickly. This is a great um, Netflix or movie project. <clears throat> like you're just sitting in front of the TV watching a movie, this would be a great one. Because there's not really that much thought process involved in it. Okay, so now we're on our ninth row, and let's see what we're going to do here. So now what we're going to do, we have these here, these little butterflies. These are butterfly stitches in my mind. So we have our little butterflies. So what we want to do is we want to shift them over. So we want one butterfly here and then a butterfly here. So now we're going to work the second half of this pattern repeat to where we're, we're shifting the butterflies over. So we're going to be doing the same um, slipping the yarn in front on this row, but we're going to change the stitch count that we do. So let's do knit one, pro one, we we'll do our seed stitch border here on the edge. And now when we come here, we're going to knit 10. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. All right, so now we're gonna slip five with the yarn in front. And then we're gonna knit five. Because we've already shifted that pattern over by knitting 10 on the first. So we don't need to knit 10 again. Now we're just working in between those existing butterflies. I could see this looking really pretty in a hand dyed yarn as well, though I think a solid color would serve it better. But I think it would be pretty in a variegated, maybe a tonal as well. Uh oh, hold on. I think I'm at the end here. Okay, so once we get to the end, then we're going to knit 10. So we're going to do our final yarn over here, our yarn in front here, and then be mindful about where you're at in the pattern or on the fabric. And then when we come to our last one here, we're gonna just knit 10. So I've knit five already. So I'm gonna knit six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. And then I'm gonna do my seed stitch border. Beautiful. Now we're on an even row, we're on row 10, so now we're going to do a purl again. Why do I keep going to the right? Always, always going to the right over here. Just cozy that way, I guess.
there is nothing more satisfying to me than sitting here watching this just go into this fabric. Just seeing the cake getting less and less. Oh, I just love it so much. It's one of the most satisfying feelings in the world, watching yarn get turned into something useful and functional. It's taking this beautiful little yarn. It could have been anything in the world. It could have been a sweater. It could have been socks. It could have been shorts. Like, you don't know what it's going to be. And here it is. It's turned into a baby blanket. Mm -mm -mm. It's going to serve its, its life as a baby blanket. And I love that so much. Just making something useful and practical. I get a lot of, I don't know if it's serotonin or dopamine, whenever something is complete. So like when I finish something, so like a tube of toothpaste, like the last squeeze, and I get to like, you know, throw the old tube away. I just get so many like feel goods. I don't know why it is, like lotion bottles, the last little drop of lotion and then I get to throw it away. I don't know. It's definitely a, a way to hack my brain. I think that's why I like knitting so much is that I get to use things up like this. Who knows? Brains are funny. All right, so now we're gonna do this again. So you see the pattern repeat, right? So now we're gonna start doing, we'll need three of the uh, yarn in fronts on this one. So we're gonna keep working the pattern repeat until we have three of those yarn in fronts. So I'm not going to keep you here while I do this because it's going to take, it's going to take a second. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to finish doing my other repeats here and I'm going to go ahead and, um, you know, get to the point where we're ready to snatch them up and then I'll be back. All right, so now we're at row 15. So we're going to do our seed stitch border. And now we're going to knit 12. So now we have 12 stitches knitted. We're gonna do the same thing we did last time. We're gonna pick up those three so we got those three stitches, we're going to knit through here, bring it all the way through, and give it a little bit of a tug. I noticed that my, these stitches here were a little bit loose last time, so give it a little bit of a tug there. And then we're going to, once again, knit nine. Now we're going to knit nine. One, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight, nine. So if you ever get lost and you're like, oh my gosh, I can't remember where I need to be here. Anytime you're coming to pick up your, your yarn in fronts, always make sure you're knitting into this middle stitch in between these yarn in fronts whenever you're picking them up. So once you pick them up, you should be knitting into that middle stitch. So there's five stitches you should be knitting into the third one. Go ahead and drop that off, tighten that up, and then knit nine.
All right, so after you do your last one here, you're gonna knit 12. And then we're gonna do our seed stitch border. And then the last row of this pattern repeat is going to be a purl. So row 16, we're just gonna purl all the way across. And then that is the pattern repeat. So we're gonna start from row one after we finish our purl row, and then just keep making the alternating butterfly stitches. So I'm gonna do a few rows and get some fabric built up and then I'll come back and show you guys what I have. All right, so I've got quite a bit of fabric worked up here. To be exact, I worked until it was about 30 inches. So the border here is going to be about two inches. So I wanted to leave enough room because I was going for 32 inches to do my two inch border. So isn't that beautiful? Oh my goodness, let's just take a moment to look at how beautiful this stitch pattern is. <laughs> I am so impressed. I could see this in a sweater. This would be so beautiful in a sweater. If I ever learn how to freehand make sweaters, I'm definitely using this to create one. Or if you already know how to freehand to make sweaters and you decide that you want to make a pattern, of a sweater with this stitch, please let me know because I would love to have a sweater and I will definitely buy your pattern. <clears throat> All right, enough of that. So now my next steps are going to be super, super simple. So I still have yet to work a purl row. So I'm gonna go ahead and knock that purl row out and then I'm going to do my seed stitch border and I'll come back and guide you through that when I'm done with my purl row here. All right, so I've completed my last purl row. So now I'm on the front side of the work again, and I'm going to begin my seed stitch border. So it's gonna be really easy to start this. We're just gonna do the same thing we have been doing. So I'm gonna slip this first stitch, and I'm gonna purl, knit, purl, knit. Let's go ahead and remove this marker. We don't need it anymore. Put it in the marker holder. <laughs> so basically what our seed stitch is, is we're gonna knit the pearls and purl the knits. So we did knit, purl, knit, purl, knit, and now we're gonna do a purl. And we're just gonna keep going down. Purl, knit, purl, knit, purl, knit, purl, knit. So we're gonna keep going all the way down. All right, I'm coming up to my next marker here. I'm gonna go ahead and take that off. And now I'll continue on. All right, we're at the end of the row here. So let's go ahead and turn it around. 
My goodness, it's so unwieldy when it's this long. <laughs> All right, now we're going to do the other side. So let me do something here real quick. I'm gonna pull up the pattern again and see how many of these exactly we need to do so I don't lose count. Okay. All right, give me one second. Okay, we're just gonna work two inches, so that makes sense. Okay, so now we're gonna knit the first stitch, purl. So it's basically just gonna be knit purl. Every row. Start with a knit, and then purl, knit, purl, knit, purl. All the way down. So we're gonna do that for two inches. And then we're gonna cast off. And I'll show you how to cast off here in a minute. So when I'm done with my two inches of knit purl, then I'll meet you back here. All right, so I have my border now completed. Now we're gonna move on to the cast off or the bind off. Now, I don't like doing a stretchy bind off on blankets because I feel like it can distort their shape. So what I do is just a traditional standard bind off and I'm gonna bind off in pattern. So I'm going to bind off, knit here, then I'm going to purl, and then I'm going to take this stitch, the first one, pass it over. Then I'm going to knit, pass that over, then I'm going to purl and pass the stitch over. Knit, pass the stitch over, purl, pass the stitch over, knit, pass, Purl, pass, knit, pass, purl, pass. So you get the point. <laughs> and I'm going to continue all the way down just like that. If I get distracted while I'm doing this and I forget what I need to do next, whether it be a knit or a purl, I can just look at the next stitch. I see that's a purl, so I know I need to knit. Now this blanket typically works up pretty quickly. It took me a little bit longer because I had a last minute Christmas order come in <clears throat> and I needed to knit five beanies and a scarf. So that was a bit of a chaotic week. So that's why it's taken me a little bit longer to get this video out than I anticipated. But we are getting there. Uh-oh. Run in my mouth, pearl, pearl, pearl. <laughs> <clears throat> See how easy it was? I just forgot where I was for a second. Figured it out. Now I did grossly overestimate how much yarn I would need for this. I ended up using two balls of the yarn that I recommended in the beginning of the video. Not the seven I originally thought that I was going to need. This is a 28 by 32 inch blanket. So having two of those balls of yarn worked out perfectly. 
Actually, I'm going to have a little bit left over from this ball here. So I used just under two. Twenty-two ounces seems like a lot of yarn to have recommended for this pattern. I'm not sure that was accurate. <laughs> but no worries. It never hurts to have extra yarn. <clears throat> It'll go in my stash and eventually I'll use it. Now I have noticed that uh, whenever I start knitting baby things, so I started knitting this baby carriage cover and my original intention was to list it in the shop and sell it once it was complete. But I've noticed that whenever I start knitting baby stuff, babies start popping up around me. So I started knitting this and was about halfway through it when I learned that one of my friends at the post office that I go to when I drop my yarn orders off, she is having a baby. She found out she was pregnant. <laughs> so this blanket will be going to her and her new baby. Super exciting. So be careful when you cast on baby stuff, because you never know. <laughs> Some sort of magic involved in that. You create an intention and then all of a sudden you bring it into existence somewhere around you. getting close to the edge here. The last few bind off stitches are always the most exciting because it means another project has come to an end, is concluded, is hot off the needles. Oh my goodness. All right, let's pull that up a little bit. Set our needles down. We need to get our scissors now. And cut this yarn. Perfect. These are so sharp. You got to be extra careful putting that cat back one. Let's go ahead and pull the yarn through and let's take a look at our handiwork and see how our bind off looks. Look at that. How gorgeous. And you see how it's not too stretchy. If I would have done a stretchy bind off, it would have fluted out. You can tell it's trying to flute out a little bit there, but I think it's just because the fabric is kind of ruched in the middle. Now you could block this. Uh, I'm not going to because I think it's perfectly fine the way it is, but you could block it to kind of have it lay a little bit more flat and have a little bit better shape definition, but I think it's beautiful just the way it is. So I'm going to go ahead and weave in my ends <clears throat> and get this photographed and put up on Instagram. If you follow me on Instagram, go ahead and head over there. You can check it out. And um, I will be doing a giveaway in this video. So let me leave in my ends real quick and then I'll go grab a, a, one of the yarns that I'm going to choose to give away in this video. All right, I'll be right back. In this video, if you've watched all the way through to this point, I will be giving away this beautiful self-striping yarn by Viscotti Yarn called This Sock. And it is a fingering weight, superwash merino and nylon yarn that is perfect for making stripes of any kind. So you can make striped socks, you can make a striped scarf, whatever you want, striped hat, your choice. So this is a very beautiful pink and yellow and magenta. Let's unfurl it a little bit here so we can see. 
and it is self-striping. So you're going to be able to create some beautiful little stripes with this yarn. Look at that. Look at how soft. So if you're interested in winning this, then what you're going to want to do is go down into the comments below and comment magenta. And once you comment magenta, like the video, make sure you're subscribed and then make sure that you go into your YouTube profile and add your email so that I can reach out to you via email to ship you your prize. Thank you so much for watching. Good luck in the giveaway and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.